Welcome back to your average witch. In this episode, we meet Samantha. This witch from the Midwest talks about her experience with mental health, shares a spirit visit with her sister as a child, and shares some advice for new witches. Now let's get to the stories. Hello, Samantha. Welcome to the show. Hello. Thank you for having me. Please introduce yourself and let everybody know who you are and where they can find you. Uh, my name is Samantha Morose. I don't do anything really super cool other than I'm starting a uh, meal prep service where I live. You can find me at the prep spot on Instagram or my personal at Samantha.Morose. And none of it has capitals or anything like that. Cool. Um, I'm a witch. I do cool shit. That's about it. What kind of cool shit do you do? Um, I do a lot of artwork just for fun, random stuff, and I take care of my kid. So what does it mean to you when you call yourself a witch? For me, it's mostly the movement of, the intentional movement of energy uh, in any way, shape, or form. So like any kind of, you know, affirmations, meditation, anything like that, to me, it's an intentional form of moving energy. And I think that's what witchcraft is all about. Do you have any daily rituals that you do in your practice? Kind of. I, and it's okay to say no because I don't. <laughs> I, I do, but also like I don't because it's a little bit harder to do things like that when you have a kid. I do kind of have a morning thing that I do where I have like an actual morning routine that I hand the baby off for a little bit of time and take time to myself to get some exercise in and do a card pull. If like if I have the time in the day to do it, because it's important to me to make that time for myself. But really, I don't have a whole lot that I do on purpose. <laughs> it's just stuff that I was doing before that I'm like, oh, crap, I need to start doing that again because um, it's not good for me when I don't. The on purpose part. Yes. Made me laugh. <laughs> um, do you have any family history with witchcraft? Ooh, um. I have a lot of like spirit stuff with my sister that has happened um, with witchcraft, but really when it comes to like family history, my mother says that she is a witch, but I've never actively seen her practicing, but that also doesn't mean anything. Um, so when she says she is, I 100% believe her. And then my grandmother, when she passed away, we had to clean out her house and we actually found all kinds of like geodes and rocks and different things. And I, I can't decide if she was a witch or if she just collected them because they were pretty because she also did have a hoarding problem. My sister, she's not, but we share a lot of the same beliefs. And then I actually have a young sister-in-law who is very interested. And I think she is, she's just a little scared to start the path because she's only about 12. Aww. But every time she's over at my house, she always like looks at all my books and stuff and asks, asks me all kinds of questions. And I, I think that she is. She just doesn't realize it yet. That's hard when you're a kid. Oh, yeah. I mean, everything is. <laughs> oh. oh, yeah, definitely. And she's going through a lot right now. Um, what kind of things happened with your sister? We share a lot of like the same encounters or like remembering. So there was... I have two really big ones that I 100% remember and that I've actually talked with my sister about once we got once we got older. And it, actually, just a couple months ago, we talked about it for the first time. So when we moved into a new house with our dad, we moved. I, I vividly remember like being in our new bedroom and we didn't have any beds or any toys or anything like that, except that we had a couple of McDonald's Happy Meals in the middle of the floor and we were playing the, with the toys that came with it. Cause they were moving everything in and you know, they wanted to keep us away from them. So my dad was like, cool, take these and go play. And I vividly remember playing with the toy and then looking up for like a split second out the doorway. And I saw these two like kind of soldier looking people. They had one was tall and one was short and the tall one had a handlebar mustache. He was very heavily decorated with pins and stuff. He had on a dark blue soldier outfit and you know the same with the sh shorter one but I remember looking at them and then kind of looking back down at the toy for a second I looked back up and they were gone and I never saw them again well a couple months ago I talked to my sister about it and she was like I saw those same exact guys too on the same night for the same thing and I never saw them again 
which was really weird to me because with my sister and I, we have the kind of belief that we don't necessarily believe in the same things, but this is the one thing we do and we had never talked about it before. Um, we have a, I have a second one actually, and this one is a little weirder because I was much, much younger and I also have stories about this house. So we, as young girls going to our grandparents' house was like a really big deal. And I remember there was a night that we decided that we were going to go and spend the night at our grandmother's house. And it was, this was before my grandfather had cancer the first time. So my grandma and my grandpa's bedroom was still upstairs after he got cancer. The first time it was downstairs. And that's kind of how I know I was like less than five years old because the first time he got cancer, I was really young. So I, re I remember, um, we were up in my grandparents' bedroom. Like we were supposed to lay down. I don't know where my grandma and my grandpa were, but I don't, they weren't there as far as I can remember. But all I know is that I had fallen asleep and then I woke up very, very late at night and I felt like I needed to go downstairs and open the front door. And I don't know what was calling me to do it. And I actually don't act like, I don't even remember if it really happened or not, but I felt very called to go down the front door. I don't remember walking down the stairs. I don't remember crossing the living room. I don't even remember getting out of bed. The only thing I do remember is standing at the foot of the door with the door wide open with my sister staring up at a full moon. And I swear we saw something fly over the moon. I don't know what it was, but I talked to my sister about it a couple months ago. And she said that the same, she thought the same thing happened too. And thought that we just, she had had a dream about it, which is what I chalked it up to as a young kid too. Cause I was like five. I uh, have, I feel very no thank you about that. <laughs> it was, I felt like, I didn't feel bad about it. It felt like a very subtle, calm thing, but really like that kind of stuff doesn't scare me a whole lot, but I, I've been around it my entire life. Um, that sounds really aliens come in to give I, you that weird I, calm I, and then they I, come and take you. <laughs> our, um, our grandparents' house was definitely built like on top of something. We don't really know what it was, but I mean, we've seen it all there. We've seen figures, orbs, shapes, shadows. We've heard voices. Like after, after my grandfather passed away, um, we moved, I was like 18. We moved in with my grandma to help her adjust and, um, really weird things would happen. And it was directly related to my grandfather. Like his coffee pot would blink and go off at the same time every morning, despite not being plugged in. His alarm clock would beep and go off at the same time every morning, even though it didn't have the batteries in it. And there was actually one time where we had, we had the whole family had come inside and we were carrying in groceries and bickering among each other. Like, you know, families do, especially when they're in a really high stress situation, because the relationship with our grandmother became very strained after that we were all carrying in groceries and nobody was by the kitchen table, but we were all like arguing amongst each other. And then my grandfather's old cigarette tray, like glass cigarette tray flew completely off the table and shattered on the, on the floor. And there's, Jeez. yeah, there's not a single person in our family that you can convince that it wasn't him doing that to get us to stop arguing. Cause it worked. It did the job. <laughs> Every single one of us believes it was him. There's no other way. But other than that, it's been the basics of, you know, like hearing footsteps and watching the doors move and the general feeling of being watched. And I, I got a break whenever I moved out on my own where nothing really happened until my husband and I moved into our first house together. And we actually moved back to Stoutland into a really old rundown house that was kind of in the middle of nowhere. We had instances where things would be moved, even though neither of us moved them. The blinds would go up and down. I had... There was an instance where we got locked out of our bedroom door, even though we didn't know there was a lock on the inside of the door. Um, that's, but that's nice. Yeah, I was smart enough to leave one of the windows in the bedroom unlocked because I, like, lose my keys, if I'm going to be completely honest. <laughs> and, uh, it just happened to be the room that was our bedroom that I left unlocked. But the weirdest thing that happened in that house was we had a shelf really high up where we had a bamboo plant in a glass jar full of water. And we had it high up like that because I have two cats that like to eat plants. So we made sure the cats couldn't reach these. 
my husband left for work one morning and I left to work after him. And then I got home from work before he came back. And that plant had somehow managed to make it from the top shelf all the way to the ground, still in the jar, not broken. The plants weren't moved and the water was still in it. And nobody had been to the house. Hmm. So I don't know what, what that was about. Um, and then we moved here and I've only ever had one thing happen here. And I, it was a real big note for me. I, um, was folding clothes of my babies to put up in his dresser and it was in a pile and he had gone down to bed for the night, but he, for some reason woke up and started crying. So I left the room and went to comfort him. And when I came back, I looked at the pile of clothes and the shirt that I had been holding was like not hovering, but it looked like it was being held. And when I looked at the shirt, it just dropped to the ground back into the pile. And that one was my like, absolutely. No, you not. may not. <laughs> yeah, that was the, we're about to sit down and have a talk because this isn't cool. And then it, I think it ended up being just a spirit of the house. That's curious about what's going on. I don't think anybody's lived in this house for a while because they just came in and put like a brand new AC unit. And the landlord was telling me that this house wasn't livable whenever they bought it. So it's, it's been a hot minute since it's been lived in. So I think it was mostly just a curiosity, like what the heck is she doing sort of thing? <laughs> yeah, but I was not okay with it at all. Freaked me out. But yeah, that's, um, those are the main experiences. I mean, I, I am sure that I will always have more to share, but those are like the highlight ones of my life that I a hundred percent remember and will never forget. Aside from spiritual stuff, what is your first experience with witchcraft? Like intentional experience? Yeah. I had, we, I moved into my very first apartment on my own and um, I was kind of like really going through it. I had gotten out of a toxic household and I had finally gotten out and got my very first apartment and I was just really going through it. So finally I decided like, you know what? I believe in this stuff. I'm going to cleanse my space and see if maybe I can like feel a little better about this. So, you know, I did the whole sage and put out new crystals and open the windows and let it all out and stuff. And I remember the feeling after doing it. I don't remember really. I kind of blacked out while it was happening. But whenever I was done, it was literally like taking, you know, the first full breath that you take of springtime air after it's been winter the whole time, but it's nice yes. enough you don't have to wear your coat. And yeah. it's like a, a feeling of newness. It felt like that. That's and lovely. Yeah, when I cleanse my house, when it's a really good cleansing, I still feel that every single time. It was amazing. I need to do that. <laughs> I was just thinking I about really that. need to do that. <laughs> um, I well, I try to do it once a week because whatever is in the house, it's not heavy necessarily, but it's just like stagnant. That's how it is here. I really need to do it. I think yeah. maybe I might even do it like after this. <laughs> <laughs> I can't blame you. Yeah, no, it, it definitely starts to feel stagnant, especially with as many mo like emotions as you go through and not being the only one in your house. It, you've got to like really upkeep it. Yeah, and there's something else in our house, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. What would you say is your favorite witchcraft experience? Favorite. Or worst? Whichever one entertains you the most to tell. <laughs> um, My favorite one... I think so far has actually happened. Um, it was last October. I went to a retreat called Yoga Gab Retreats. She, this woman is amazing. She has really helped, helped me understand what my path is about and where, where I'm supposed to be headed. My, my friend actually told me about it and she was like, Hey, you know, you haven't practiced in a really long time. You're kind of not okay right now. Like this is something that you really need to do. And I, I had just found out I was pregnant. My husband and I almost ended up not getting married because I was going through so much and I was just too in my head about things. And she was like, I think this is just going to be really good for you. You should do it. So I told my husband about it and he was like, you know what? You, you really should go do it. And it was fun. It was right before the election because it was in October. Oh, God. oh man. 
So it wasn't the first night. It was the second night. Um, we did a moon dance and I had never, I'm not a part of a coven. I'm a solo practitioner, even though like, you know, later on in life, not even later on, but I would really love to be a part of, of something like that. It was the first time I had done anything with other witches and we did a moon dance around a bonfire under the full moon. Oh. First of all, when you do that, it's like a really big vibe. And a lot of the people there were using plant medicine, which for me, I think is so fascinating. I think it's super, super fascinating. But we, she led the moon dance and, you know, we did You Should See Me in a Crown by Billie Eilish. And she had shown us like different moves to help move the energy through your body. And I had never done anything like it before, but finally... I don't know your stance on any of this, but this is my personal stance. I'm very not Republican, very much. Jesus and, Christ, how do you not know that I'm not? <laughs> I don't. I don't know. Um, I don't. I don't pay a lot of attention to. That makes me <laughs> sorry. I don't the know. thought of them makes me very angry. <laughs> yeah. So okay, well, you're really gonna like this. Do you know the FDT song? I don't. Uh, maybe. They're basically <laughs> just saying, you know, like, fuck Donald Trump. Yeah, yeah, oh. Donald Trump. So um, we danced to that song. And the way she led it was the same way as with the Billie Eilish song. But she kind of led us to, like, let those emotions and those feelings build up and, you know, push your energy out there and, you know, take energy and let it draw into you and really feel it. And I, like, when that moon dance was over, I walked away literally shaking because I was so like amped up. I had so much energy like coursing through me. I could feel it in like, literally every limb of my body. And I had never felt that before, especially with it being around a bunch of other witches who felt the exact same way. It was just, I had up until that point, I had been taking a break from witchcraft for my mental health because it, it had really like went downhill. And then we did that one. And then I was like, okay, no, this is good for me. I need to do stuff like this because I have never felt that energized and like charged up. I'd never felt that feeling before. And I've had multiple instances. I've, I've only went to two of her retreats and the last one was a family gathering retreat. And uh, we didn't do a moon dance, but we literally just sitting and talking. I had felt the same feelings before with, with this group of people, because it's all, it's a whole group of people and they are just, it's so amazing to have support like that, especially living in Lebanon. You said you've heard of them. They're very against anything that's not Christian Republican. So kind of, if you're like me, a pansexual witch, you kind of got to like keep that stuff to yourself. Otherwise you're going to hear it or get it. <laughs> yeah. I like, there have been times where I've genuinely be, been scared. So it was just, oh, that makes me so angry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like realizing, realizing that like, this is who I am and this is who I can be. And it's okay to be myself. That's a lot of why I was so comfortable with moving where I did is because this group is so supportive and they're here and, here is a place that's more accepting, which is weird because it's an only an hour drive, not even. And I can just be who I want to be. And, you know, my my family, for the most part, is accepting. But there are definitely members that if I told, I would 100% be disowned. But that was, I think, the, the, one of the best experiences I've ever had. Do you want to go over worst or no? If Actually, I would because it's a little bit funny because I did it myself. As a very immature, new, naive practicing witch, I did the whole little bay leaf wish jar sort of thing. I don't know if you know what that is. Like you, um, you put a wish on a bay leaf and you burn it over a bowl of salt on like the new moon to manifest what you want or like what you want to work on. And then at the new moon, you bury it. Not, um... Like I buried mine in a jar. Don't just don't just bury it like salt on the ground. Don't yeah. Salt, yeah. Don't just bury it. Like, <laughs> bury it in a jar or something. But um, I, as a very naive and new practicing witch, um, ask for guidance with spiritual and personal growth. Don't do that uh, for if you're not prepared. Because <laughs> I'm still in the middle of an existential crisis. 
And I 100% believe that it is because of that one thing. And I haven't dug the jar back up yet because I asked for it. So I'm going to put myself through it if I ask for it. I'm not going to go back now. I'm, I'm already in it. That's probably wise. Yeah, but it, I, I do have to say not only has it been like the worst, it's also like been really good. Like it's been really good for me. I, I have a stronger sense of self. But, man, I probably shouldn't have asked for it. <laughs> Sometimes lying awake at night is a little bit scary. What would you say is your biggest motivator in witchcraft? The never-ending uh, never feeling that I wasn't necessarily put on Earth to live life out in society the way it's happening. Like, I'm not, I'm not meant to be unfulfilled and unhappy. I'm, I'm here for a reason, to learn something. And this is how I connect with myself and have a stronger sense. And I know that the only way to get there and to understand what I'm here for is doing the work. And it's not necessarily motivating. I know that's more of a discipline sort of thing, but I kind of live more on discipline than motivation, to be honest. That's the Capricorn in me. <laughs> Do you know I know very little about Capricorns? Um, it is my sun, moon, and rising, and Lord, yeah, it's re you Capricorn to death. <laughs> oh man, um, yeah, it is. I this sounds really weird. I never really felt like a Capricorn, um, and later on, I went, I went on and like learned more about my chart. But I also have like an Aquarius stellium, so I think that has a lot to do with it. But now, the more I read about it, and the more I'm researching and learning, the more I'm like, oh yeah, I'm a hundred percent a Capricorn. <laughs> But I do have to say, we are not the cold-hearted, hateful people that people seem to think we are. I cry all the time about everything. All the time. So I don't I don't really know where they got that from. Because all the other Capricorns I know are the exact same way. Is it tears of rage? <laughs> no, I'm just over-emotional. Honestly, I really don't know anything at all about Capricorns, so I don't <laughs> even know what you're talking about, so... Um, a lot of people, you know how, like, Scorpio gets the whole, like, evil, the evil, they only want sex sort of thing, oh. bad rep. Um, our bad rep is that we're just, like, cold-hearted and don't have any emotions, and that is, like, the furthest from the truth I think you could get. I, uh, or something? Why do people think that? I don't know. Um, I think a lot of it is because, like, Suppressing your emotions is a really big thing and not really talking about the things that are really bothering you. It's it's just like with any other like astrological sign or anything like that. Like there's two sides to the story. So, you know, you could go this way or you could go this way. And really it's up to you. But for the most part, most people that I know that have a, like Capricorn specifically as their moon sign, we're very emotional people. We just... Not everybody always has to know about it. And I think that's why is because if you're not a part of like our inner circle, that's you don't stay see. safe. Yeah. It, but also like I could cry in front of anybody at any moment, but I also think that might have something to do with other placements in my chart or something like that. I don't know. I don't know a lot about it. All I know is that those are my big ones and that it is very true to who I am. <laughs> Also, RBF. Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> Sometimes people, like, if I don't know people, they'll come up to me and they'll be like, you know, I didn't like you when we first met because you look mean. That, I, I get that one, yep. or I get the, you I've always look that. like you're going to cry face. I was I scared to come talk to you. <laughs> yeah, why? That's just my face. You should know that by now. You've seen it all the time. Do you feel like you ever suffer from is such a dumb phrase what do you most desire for your practice wow that's a deep question honestly i think becoming myself i think that's the biggest thing um having to hide myself for the longest time and not feeling like I could be myself. I know that who I actually am is kind of kind of deep down there screaming to be let out. And so far, a lot of my work has been internal, which 
for me was scary to like take that plunge because then, you know, I had to admit my wrongdoings and that I used to not be the greatest person and that I've done some things that were really messed up. But I just, I think I just want to be fulfilled and work on getting to know who I am and what I'm here for and do those things. That is so nice. (laughs) That's so nice. It sounds nice. It's not. I'm in a crisis. I know, not actively doing it isn't, but the fact that you want to and you're able to verbalize it is so nice. It's taken a long time to realize that's what I wanted. Do you have a, a coming out story? As a witch or as a pansexual woman? Either one, both, whatever you want to talk about. <laughs> um, so with my mom, um, I remember coming out to her at like a bonfire and it was actually whenever my sister was experimenting, she wasn't sure if she liked women and men or if it was just men. Um, turns out it was just men. She just liked the idea of being with a woman. So I kind of took that opportunity to be like, uh, well, mom, I'm into everyone. So there's that. And she was just like, cool. Sounds good. It was super chill. Like, and then the conversation just kind of kept going. I told my dad about it at a DMV. We were getting ready to take the driver's (laughs) test and he caught me. He caught me looking. Yeah. He caught me looking and he was like, do you like girls? And I was like, she has a nice butt, dad. And then he was like, she really does, doesn't she? And then we went out and got lunch and talked a little more about it. And it was, it was a good time, which was a, that was kind of a shocker for me because my dad, he's the side of the family where like, if I were to tell them about being a witch, I would a hundred percent be disowned. I remember telling my mom that I was a witch and it was kind of Uh, again uneventful like she just kind of looked at me and was like yeah duh like that's (laughs) obvious you collect pretty rocks there I know they're not just pretty rocks um but the good one was when I when I came out as a witch to my husband I waited a lot longer than I should have I think to tell him like we we were living in that house that I told you about in Stoutland um And I had like a room set up where I was doing that. And we had been together at this point for, I think, two and a half years. Good night. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not really sure. Maybe, no, I think it may have been one and a half. It it was a while, but fun fact, like um, my husband and I knew each other in high school. We were, we were friends in high school and then we reconnected after high school. I waited like a year and a half, I think. And then like, once I started collecting books to read and like actually doing spells and stuff. That's when I decided, okay, one of these nights he's going to like catch me doing a spell naked or something. And like, (laughs) so I remember like just kind of being like, Hey babe, um, we were sitting on the bed and I was like, you know about my religious views. Right. And he was like, you don't have one. And I was like, no, um, I'm a witch. And he was just like, Oh, what does that mean? (laughs) So I kind of, I didn't really know how to explain it. And I remember kind of stumbling over my words for a minute. And then he was like, okay, cool. And then just went back to his YouTube video. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> and now, now he kind of shows some interest sometimes, but for the most part, he just doesn't. Like if I tell him I need you to like leave me alone for a little bit, he kind of gets it. But he's not really too interested. <laughs> and then... When it came, when it came to telling my sister, that was another one that she was like, yeah, duh, sort of thing. (laughs) I didn't, like with my mom's side of the family, it's super easy. Like they just, she doesn't care for the most part what I do as long as I'm not harming myself or anybody else. She's cool with it. What would you say is your biggest struggle when it comes to witchcraft? The Same thing as the biggest motivator, not the biggest motivator, the, what I want to get out of it. Um, admitting when I'm wrong is a really hard thing for me to do specifically when it comes to things that I knew that I did wrong a long time ago. And then knowing that now that I've admitted it, I have to go and tell the person that I wronged that I wronged them and that I was sorry for, you know, not being honest about it and 
coming to terms with it and actually fearing that I'm going to lose my friends because I have done things in the past and not necessarily to them, but I have like not been honest and stuff like that. Just things that you do when you're a teenager or a young person. And I just didn't want to admit them. And most, most recently I do have to say the biggest one was I had to admit to my husband that whenever we first got together, like I had a lying problem and, um, I 100% thought that, like, I, I messaged my mom group and I was like, I might need somewhere to stay because I thought he was going to ask for a divorce or something. But he was just kind of like, yeah, I know. And I've been working on it. <laughs> but it's, it's, I, the universe has been screaming at me to be honest about that and to, like, say something for months. And I just didn't do it because of that fear. And I think getting over that fear is my biggest struggle is just, just doing it. And making the time to do it and holding the space because I know that I deserve to have that life. And it just, I've always been too scared. So let's move from individualism to, that's probably the wrong word, to the witchcraft community at, as a whole. Is there anything that makes you angry about the witchcraft community? Witch talk. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it. It makes me so mad. Gatekeepers? I don't get that. I understand a, cu a culturally, cu wow, words, what are they? A exactly. culturally closed practice. I get that. But gatekeeping, like, you can't do that that way or that's not how you do that. And it's only when it's in, like, a hateful way. Like, you can be like, oh, this is my opinion and this is how I do it. And that's cool. But whenever you're like, that's wrong and you can't do it that way, I have a really big problem with it. Because it's just them putting themselves on a pedestal. I don't get it. What's the point? That's not what we're here about. That's, I, oh, it makes me so mad. <laughs> I know this sounds really mean, but sometimes, like, I just want to, like, drop kick the entire witch talk community as a whole at once. But I don't know how that would work or how to do it, so I don't. Like, yeah. Probably along the same lines as hexing the moon. <laughs> I remember when those headlines were fave. Like, Are you fave? fave. What even is this? Why would they do something like that? That and the Fae. I'm like, you guys are stupid. <laughs> yeah, and I'm still new, but even like, it was whenever I saw like other new witches like being like, you guys are freaking stupid. Like, it's the moon. <laughs> She's just gonna roll her eyes at you and go on. Oh, I don't know. I never even did see the how it ended, like what what brought it on or who did it. I had a vague, have a vague memory of some dude. I thought That's it. I, I, I don't even care. Or something like that. I don't really know. It's, it's just that happened in mild amusement right? from the past. I don't have any concept of time. <laughs> I think that was in 2020. I'm not sure though, honestly. How long is that? That was such now? a shit show of a year. I, uh, yeah. Mm. What is something you wished was discussed more in the witchcraft community? how um how hard it actually is to do the thing like that's it's it's hard to like especially when you struggle with mental heart it's hard to actually do the research and it's hard to really stick your neck out there and get your feet in the water and do the shadow work and I also wish they would talk about the fact that it's not easy it's hard it hurts especially when you're doing shadow work you feel depressed a lot and you grieve like your old naive self sometimes because it was simple and you didn't have to think and it was an easy path. And that's not what the witch's path is at all. I wish, I wish that was more of a thing. Do you celebrate any holidays or Sabbaths? Beltane. Is that your favorite? No, that, that one's my favorite. Can um, you please explain what you do? Well, last year I got wine drunk. That was right before I like got pregnant too. Um, well, but I actually like got to have an actual celebration because we were laid off and everything. And I think that I had like a little fire outside and just ate and was grateful and kind of like conversed with the moon. And I didn't, I didn't do any spells or anything like big or fancy or anything because by then I didn't have this whole supportive group and my friendships and stuff like that, that's happened in like the last four months. So none of that was a thing then. I didn't have any, any friends like that. Like I lived 
in the middle of nowhere and didn't talk to people. I know that life. I'm essentially a different person than I was. Huh. Completely. <laughs> for, for the better. I'm not, I firmly believe that I'm not meant to be a hermit. That's not my, my go-to. What, who would you say are three biggest influences on your practice? Oh, people? Yeah. Um, or I guess inanimate things or ideas, whatever. Well, I, this is not me trying to be like self-centered, but me for sure. Um, my ideas, the way I go about things, tweaking routines, doing things differently, what I'm interested in doing, you know, like if I wasn't interested in these things, my practice wouldn't be here. So definitely me. And that's not my way of sounding like self-centered or anything like that, but I couldn't do anything like that if I wasn't interested in it. Um, my friends for sure. I, I have a large friend group and their support is very motivating and they always bring new stuff to the table to try. One more, uh, the last person I think for the biggest influence for my, for my practice, fucking motorcycles, man. They're cool, but why does, why, I mean, it is 1130 on a Monday, Sunday, no concept of time. <laughs> you just made me think, oh, is it Monday? <laughs> I'm supposed to be at work. I made a mistake. I should be driving at this point if it's a Monday. I should be delivering meals. Actually, I would be off. Oh, it's 1130 for you. I don't know what time it is here. <laughs> anyway, who's the third one? <laughs> um, I think my son, to be, to be honest, I do things now. It's different when you have a kid. I do things constantly, especially if I'm doing things for my house and protection work and stuff. I always do it with him in mind and what is his best interest. And now a lot of the work that I do is actually for him. I have made like sweet dreams jars and stuff like that to like help him sleep and with the teething and stuff like that. And I did find that this, the sweet dreams jar worked like a freaking charm, which was nice. But he definitely is a, an encouragement on what I need to work on as a parent. And I, that directly translate to, translates to my craft for me too. It's, it's just important to me to do the work to become the best I can to provide a good life for him. And I know that this is a sole part of that for me. Huh. I know you said that you're relatively a, a relatively new practitioner, but what is something you would have liked to have heard from somebody you consider to be more experienced when you were be first starting out? You, you can step away from your practice if you need to just focus on surviving. And the universe is not going to hold it against you. The universe, in my opinion, is very forgiving. If you ask for something, it's going to give it. And probably not the way you think it's going to happen, but... For the most part, I, I mean, I had a period where I had to step away and set it down for like a year because I just was not okay. And I was so scared to get back into it because I thought all these bad things were going to happen to me because I stepped away without, I didn't say anything. I just stepped away. I didn't do anything for a year. I thought that it was just going to be a bad ordeal and it wasn't. I was welcomed back like I had never stepped away. And I, I wish... I wish people, you know, a, a more experienced practitioner would have explained to me that you don't have to do things perfectly and you don't have to be doing things all the time. And also, it, whatever works for you is what works for you. It's, it's going to be okay no matter what happens. That, that one. <laughs> I know, I know that a lot of people, especially more experienced people, if, if they're a little more self-righteous or something like that, a lot of the times they feel the need to present themselves and their practice and their work as perfect to new people to make it appealing for new people to, to encourage them. But also new people, what we really need to see is that it's not easy. You don't have to be perfect. Do what you want to do and you're going to be fine. I don't want to see some this perfection. Who can achieve that? No. Also then I think you're a liar. So I, no, I wouldn't want that. Yeah, True. Who would you like to see on the show? 
everyone. I know that's ridiculous. But I think I think I think anybody who practices deserves to share. I think I think having like people having these kind of platforms that allows others to share, especially average people, which is why a lot of why I love that you changed your name. I'm not a special person. And I mean, I am, but I'm also a witch. You're no more special than anybody else. (laughs) Like I know, I know that I am like this infinitely cosmic being that it was literally a miracle that I'm here, but also like, so is every other person on this planet. I'm just as unique and just as the same as everyone else. I don't mean everyone as I'm like every single person in the universe, but anyone who like feels the need to be, I don't, the two people that I wanted to were like right off the banger, a part of it. And then like the next week you did, um, Sarah from Bright Witch Brews. And I was like, man, everyone I'm wanting to see is actually on here. And, but really like, I only listen to one podcast and drink that tea. So there's that. (laughs) So, you know, I don't, I think it would be cool eventually to maybe get my friend on here, Gab, but I don't know if she could make the time. She's a very busy person. Suggest it. I, yeah, I think I'm going to. I, I think she would like the opportunity. She's a very multifaceted woman. Definitely suggest it. <laughs> yes, I plan to. <laughs> now... Last question is, please tell me a story about something you like. And it's a, just a story about anything, just as long as you like telling it. Okay, so I actually do have a good story. It was about Christmas last year. Um, I found out about our family heirloom. This is on my dad's side of the family. And last year was also the last year that we decided we were going to be doing Christmas the way we've done it before. Because um, with my dad and my mom being divorced... My mom has remarried since then, so I have three sides of the family here. And then my husband, he and, like, his dad and his mom got divorced, and then his dad remarried once, and now he's with another girl after this divorce. So he's got several sides of the family, too, and there was just too much. And then, of course, some sides of the family have multiple different Christmases, so last year we were like, this is the last year that we're doing this. But um, on Christmas Day last year, we were doing the basics. We got, like went out to my grandmother's house because that's, that's what we did. We're passing out Christmas presents and stuff under the tree. And I passed them out last year. And then um, when we were done, my Uncle Matt like brings this other one from his, his room. And he was like, when you get a moment, you guys need to open this away from little eyes. And so immediately I was like, a sex toy? (laughs) Like a gag gift sort of thing. So while they, while the kids were distracted, because, you know, they were all young, Gage and I, we opened this box and it's like stuffed with a bunch of paper and it took us forever to get it open. And like the whole family was staring at us. And when we finally got it open, it ended up being two coffee mugs. And I'll send you a picture of them so that you can see what they look like. And the coffee mugs were actually a tan skin colored mug with a penis for the handle as one of them. And the other one is a functional tan skin colored breast mug. Oh no. And I learned that this is a family heirloom (laughs) that has been passed down from generation to generation (laughs) of family members who think couples are going to work out. Oh, yeah, but I don't understand why that was it. (laughs) And this is coming from the side of my family that is like aggressively Christian. So it was a complete shocker to me to see my grandmother sitting there laughing at us because she's it to my dad who gifted it to my uncle and now it's ours. And I think this year we're going to gift it to my sister and her boyfriend. And I'm, I'm pretty sure he's about to pop the question soon. Do you have to wait? Until Christmas? No, I don't have to. Until he proposes. (laughs) Oh, God, no. I don't have to do any of that. Huh. I don't know why they... I think, honestly, my uncle probably forgot about it. And then when he found it, was like, oh, I should probably do that. (laughs) But yeah, there's there's that one. And I I remember kind of looking up. And I had an inkling that it was going to be something like that. 
when they said away from small eyes, but yeah. I wasn't expecting that of all things, especially <laughs> from that side. Like if it were my mom's side of the family, like I totally would have been like, yeah, I expected that. Yeah. That's a kind of a little bit weird. Well, thanks for being on the show. Thanks for having me. Even though I know that makes you feel awkward. <laughs> Um, I actually, I do have one thing I want to say. Yeah, I forgot to ask. Is there anything else you wanted to talk about? Specifically to other people that are listening, because I didn't know some of these things. You can be a mom in practice. You can be a new mom in practice. You can practice and have mental health issues. It's okay to not be okay and still practice. We're not perfect. You don't have to do things the way other people do them. And everything is possible. That's it. That's all I had to say. Bravo. Because a lot of those things I did not know. And I thought hmm. I was off for. Also, it's okay to take medications and practice. I don't know why that's a thing all of a sudden. Yeah. I'm seeing it a lot that, like, if you practice and you use, like, pharmaceutical medications, then you're going to lose your magic. Yeah. And I'm like, no, that's not how that goes. Yeah. I do wish more people would talk about too. that. Damn. Well, thanks for coming on the show. Of course. Thank <laughs> <Again>. you. <laughs> And I will see you on the internet. Probably, yeah. <laughs> Bye. Bye. It's time for another review. This is from Caradrum, and it's titled From a Fellow Bean. Then this is the podcast for you. Laid back bi weekly podcast with different types of witches and how they use their craft, helmed by the amazing Kim. I look forward to each podcast. And like the Witch Bitch Amateur Hour, I feel more at home knowing that I'm not alone and love hearing the magical experiences that... And I will see you on the internet. Probably, yeah. <laughs> Bye. Bye. It's time for another review. This is from Caradrum, and it's titled From a Fellow Bean. Then this is the podcast for you. Laid back bi-weekly podcast with different types of witches and how they use their craft, helmed by the amazing Kim. I look forward to each podcast. And like the Witch Bitch Amateur Hour, I feel more at home knowing that I'm not alone and love hearing the magical experiences that the interviewees have. Thank you so much. Lots of good vibes your way. Bridget M. Thanks so much, Bridget. Hey, thanks for listening to this episode of Your Average Witch. You can find us all around the internet on Instagram at Your Average Witch Podcast, Twitter at Average Witch Pod, Facebook at Facebook.com slash Your Average Witch Podcast, at youraveragewitchpodcast.com and at your favorite podcast service. Want to help the podcast grow? Leave a review on Apple Podcasts. You just might hear your review read at the end of the next episode. If you'd like to recommend someone for the podcast, like to be on it yourself, or if you'd like to advertise on the podcast, send an email to youraveragewitchpodcast at gmail.com. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you in the moon changes.